Welcome to the Sports Council. I'm Jamie Council. It's already football season, so today's show is going to be focused on football, high school football, to be more specific, and have friends here today. We have Todd Millis and uh, Jeff Morrow. Thanks for joining me, you guys. You bet. Hey, I'm glad somebody called me a friend. I didn't know if I had any or not, so thank you. Well, looking You'll at always you, be a friend. Looking at you two, I'm assuming we're going to be talking a little bit about Tri City based football. So let's should be some should be some fun conversation. Yeah. So we have Todd Millis from SB Live, um, based on the West Side, but still keeps plenty of tabs over here on the East Side. Like you mentioned, a lot of talk about Tri Cities, which is where Jeff Morrow is based, uh, former sports editor of the Tri Cities Herald. So in today's show, we're going to be talking a lot about the MCC. 3A, 4A, touching on the big nine, GSL. And then we're going to look at statewide and also of teams in the Tri-Cities in other leagues, the SCAC, 1A. And then we have the 2B. EWAC is going to be a very interesting look. So we'll dive into that as well as 1B, Liberty Christian seems to be close, but can't quite overcome that hump. So that is going to be in today's show coming up on the Sports Council. The Council is now in session. With a personality shaped by being an athlete and a background in mainstream sports media, I found that the stories I was most interested in telling were the ones often overlooked, the ones that might not otherwise be told, the ones that show the intangible and not just the highlight reel. The Sports Council is about highlighting the great, the good, the unique, and everything in between in the Pacific Northwest sports world. I'm Jamie Council. Thanks for joining me. You're listening to the Sports Council on 1340 ESPN, the Tri-Cities leader in sports. Welcome to the Sports Council joined by uh, Todd Millis and uh, Jeff Morrow. So let's jump into it. Football season has started and uh, the MCC is already underway. So Jeff, you've covered the MCC for a long time. I guess, what are your first thoughts when you, uh, how, how long have you been covering the MCC? Well, I started thinking about that I, about 39, 40 years. So, I mean, around here, well, you know, that, that goes back to the big nine days of course. So when it was Yakima schools and Wenatchee and Moses Lake involved with the Tri-Cities and Walla Walla. As soon as I mentioned that you've been covering the schools for a long time, I saw your brain turning. So with that yeah. being said, uh, what are your first thoughts another year as the MCC uh, gets underway? Uh, I just think that it's going to be another season of the big four around here, and that's going to be Chiawana, Kamayakin, Kennewick and Richland. I mean, I, I'm thinking about, uh, and Todd put it out already that his thought is that Chiawana might be the team to beat because they have, um, you know, they're strong on both sides of the ball. Um, but I, I do like Chiawana. I do like Kamaikin though, um, as far as uh, what Scott Biglin, the head coach can do. I mean, he's got a, an experienced line. These guys were starters as sophomores and now they're, they're seniors and landed Biglin and, and Baker Mundy uh, are, are the anchors of that line. Um, but they've got, you know, the Trent Woodhouse is at quarterback. And they always seem to find players to step up. Christian Mejia uh, is on the defensive line. And Dom Powell is, is a linebacker for that squad. And then you've got David Cuckoo. And everybody loves David Cuckoo. He's already committed to WSU. And uh, I'm, I'm going to be really interested. The one thing I want to look at is how many opposing quarterbacks are going to throw his way. Uh, I was surprised at how much that happened last year. Um, Kennewick uh, with Randy Affolter has just done amazing uh, the last four or five years since he's been there. He's he's kind of starting to reach, in my eyes, status of what Ed Troxell used to do at Kennewick. And, but the fa fact is that he seems to make – his team seem to make a great run deep into the postseason. And every year he seems to find – he's got one offensive lineman that's a Division One prospect – 
And, and it seems like that's going on for four years. Dominic Driver, as as the quarterback, he, he got a little bit of experience in the postseason. Uh, but, you know, you've got Alex Roberts at running back, back. But don't forget about Cannon Hayes. Cannon Hayes did a lot of damage last year. So they, they kind of spell each other. But they're both playing on the, on the defensive side of the ball, too. So that's that's going to be exciting to watch what they do. If they can get, a, you know, and I'm not going to even question whether they're going to have a strong line. I know they will. It'll be some new names that come up. Another guy to watch out at Kennel could be Cooper Near. He was a sophomore last year. He can also play running back, but he his real strength lies at linebacker for the Lions. And, and as a sophomore, he was a starter all season long, but he just – got kind of overlooked by the seniors then you've got uh what i'm really excited about too is is seeing what the bristol bombers do they've got three first team all conference receivers from 2023 and that's colson Mackey back and brody bocek bosek but you've got preston bryant who was a first team all conference uh, wide receiver last year at hanford he made the transfer over to richland high school in the spring now one of the things that struck me about that wide receiver core last year was that they ran some of the most crisp routes I've ever seen. You can always tell a good receiver uh, when they, how the routes they run, but every one of these guys ran great routes. Mike Neithold even many says, I've never seen this before. So the problem is they've got to find a quarterback to throw that ball. And there's a number, there's like three, three guys that they could use. One of them is Jackson Woodard, which would be uh, Josh Woodard's younger brother, who'll be a sophomore. This is still a battle, the coaches are saying, so I'm not sure what's going to go on there. Finally, here's Chiwana. And Chiwana, I think, has one of the most exciting defensive units. Todd and I were talking about this earlier uh, uh, a while back, was that we'd never seen a defensive unit that seemed to find ways to score. Sometimes they – it seemed like weeks upon weeks streak where they had at least a fumble return for a touchdown or a pick six, and sometimes they had two in a game. So that was where they came across with some scoring because their their offense did seem to struggle a lot last year. I think what's going to happen is, and Scott Bond, of course, the head coach, he's he's an offensive co- uh, uh, coach. He It really killed him last year that his offense wasn't moving the ball as well. But I think he's going to go back to their old format of, you know, this is the play we're going to run. It's going to be a sweep. We're going to pull our two offensive tackles or our guards, and you're going to try to stop it, try to stop it. And if it doesn't work, you know, we're going to get the first down. So th- that's what I'm seeing out of the big nine or the, the MCC this year. Wow. Do I get, does the statewide guy get to talk? <laughs> Come on in. I mean, you, you just summarize out. What else do I got to say? No, I, everything, <laughs> all the bullet points are, 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 are right on. And you, you know, that, you know, that, uh, that scene for football, Jeff, better than anybody. Um, it's funny. Cause I talked to some coaches outside the MCC that scrimmaged all those MCC schools uh, this spring and summer. And it's funny because nobody can really settle on a, on a, a consensus favorite, but uh, right. Kenawa, Kamayakin and Chiawana were all mentioned. Oh, those are the best teams I've seen. And they all have, you know, one common denominator and that's the physicality part. It's, you know, I, I was talking to a coach yesterday at a media day. I was over here that, that doesn't know the MCC, but has seen both Chiawana and Kamayakin in, in the playoffs. He's an offensive line coach. And he said, easily the two most physical defenses I've ever had to uh, prepare for in my coaching career. So that, that says a little bit about the level of physicality that a lot of people around the state aren't used to and don't really know about the MCC unless you live there and, and get to see it on a weekly basis. I, I really like this Kamaya team, Je- Jeff. I, the two biggest question marks for me about them is what does Trent Woodhouse do two years removed from a second knee in surgery? And in and, and Scott Biglin, had said, hey, we're going to take the training wheels off of him. He, you're going to see a lot more of what we did in 2000. And what, what year would, did they win it? 16, Jeff? Yeah, 16, I think. You know, with Zach. You're going to see a lot more of those same types of play call schemes. They want to get Trent running a lot more this year, two years removed from um, from the knee injury. Um, and, I, and my biggest question about Trent is the passer. He, he, threw, the, you know, he threw the ball away a lot last year. Yep. Uh, especially against some of the better teams around the state. Uh, But, uh, you know, I think you're going to see some improvement. Um, He's just got to take what's given to him. And I know that's something that Scott has reiterated with him. 
throughout uh, seven on sevens in the spring and, and in the summer. I think you're going to see a vast uh, amount of improvement with him. If he is right, Jeff, I think this is the team to beat um, yep. based on the fact that he Trent does have a fair amount of, of, of um, starting experience under his belt. Um, the other part of this is what, what are they going to do at running back? Cause Camden Schmidt, I mean, I don't, I, it might've been one of the most amazing storylines, not only in the tri cities last year, but throughout the state is you take a kid that had played receiver until week two or three and you move him in running back. And he really kind of became their offense in the playoffs. I know Trent had a good game against Emerald Ridge, but they just kind of fed him because he was big and physical and had a real nice feel for, for running the football. So if, mm -hmm. you know, if Riley Stevens, you know, if he can, He's he's built a lot like Tuna Alta here. He's he's a big guy. He can he can he can take those twenty or twenty five carries a game and and go with them. If he can if he can give them a semblance of a of a rushing attack, I think this offense um, will be better than it was at the uh, you know the, the 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 offense that I saw in person against Lake Stevens that did absolutely nothing in the state semifinals last year. But I think if those two yeah. men are good. I think I think this is the team to beat. Do you think they use Cuckoo a lot on offense too? I would imagine. I, I it's interesting because the other guy I wanted to, to mention, and and you've seen him is Michael Corey, and I got to see him play a little bit in the Lake Stevens game. Didn't do much, but nobody really did. I, I'm interested to see if if that's sort of be, going to become the um, the Peyton Graham role for him because he's gonna yeah. he's gonna play receiver. He's gonna he's a backup quarterback. He's gonna line up in uh, at running back in two in two running back sets for them. Like he's gonna be kind of a jack of all trades weapon, um, a, a fast athletic kid that can run it. And I think he might, you know, maybe not this year to the level of what Peyton Graham was for this team two years ago, but I, I bet you he becomes a really valuable, versatile weapon in this offense. But for now, I, I bet you to pair him with David Cuckoo on the outside, I, I, I think obviously Trent Roadhouse has got a couple guys that he can throw the ball to who can make big yep. plays. It's so tough. I mean, Jeff, I don't know if, 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 if you, if you get this whenever you watch Tijuana that you really want them to just be more aggressive. You're like, Oh, do something. But then they end up getting the win. They end up showing so much resilience and Scott Vaughn just knows how to win learning from Steve Graff. And it just really shows through um, the coaching that he has and I remember a couple years with um, the Webers, there's been two Webers coming through that they have a really good defense and then just have some great athletes that they rely on to get those scores. Ian Mole at running back. And then you had, I think it was Jalen Weber, kind of the one-two punch that they do enough on defense and then have those offensive pieces. And I think in the past couple of years, they haven't really gotten those offensive pieces that they had in the teams um a couple years back i'm not too worried about them um just because of this when steve graff was the coach there scott bond was his offensive coordinator they have an assistant coaching staff and they, steve would be the first to tell you scott would be the first to tell you that this staff has stayed together for more than 20 years they these guys all know what they're doing and and Graf depended on this staff to get things done and Scott's doing the same thing. They will be well coached and ready to go and if there's something wrong, they will take care of it the following week. Don't you agree, Jeff, if they can find any consistent offense and and fortunately with Braxton kind of moving into that lead running back role and and they have the quarterback coming back. Um Don Hogue, I mean I I don't think he gets enough credit uh, around nope. the state. I think he's as good a defensive coordinator as you're going to find. I hear more offensive coordinators in and out of your league that go, God, it's kind of a funky defense. And I think that's a compliment to them. I mean, they'll stand yeah. everybody up. They'll shift. They'll, you know, they, as, as Scott Bond says, we're kind of a house of mirrors on defense. Uh, and that's what we want. We want to give one look and, 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 and do another um, or give the illusion of a look and, and then attack. And like you mentioned, Jeff, I mean, I've never really heard of a defense with, what did they have? 12 or 13 defensive touchdowns last year. I mean, they. Something like that. Yeah. I can't, I can't imagine anybody around the state, you know, scoring more than that. Um, if they had gotten a little bit of support from, from the offense, a little more consistency, you know, this is a team that should have been a quarterfinal team at, at worst. And I, and I, I know Scott realized that Scott mentioned, Hey, you know, the, the, the problem with seeing a defense 
so dominant and so opportunistic is you don't want to give the ball back when they get it. And maybe we got a little conservative with our offense. Now, when you lose DJ Duran early in the season, yeah. or midway through the season, that hurts. Yeah. And and you have to, My, you have to go to another quarterback. But I, I think if this, if, if Scott, Scott has confidence in the fact that, that Braxton's going to be their, their, the lead dog in their running back and, and not in their running back core. And, and obviously they've got the quarterback back who got some time at the end of the year. And he's, he's mm-hmm. really been praised for his leadership and is, is a good solid high school quarterback. If, if those two pieces come together on this offense with the defense that they have, you know, we could Kamaya can and Kenwick and she wanted, no wonder it's so difficult to try and pick who's going to win this thing. And Oh, by the way, we, we really haven't even mentioned Richland who might be a step behind because of what happened defensively. But I mean, offensively skill position wise, is there a better team? Is there a better, is there a team in the state of Washington that has a better receiving core? I, I mean, with three first team all leaguers that you mentioned, Jeff, it's, yeah, if the quarterback thing comes together and and they they get a little a little bit better defensive play, uh, man, it's it's going to be a really really good battle for you know all the way into to, to October win this league. And I think so. Braxton Feldman has yes. had great minutes since he was a sophomore, so it's not like you know that this is his senior year, but he's been showing on both offense and defense since a sophomore so this could really be a breakout year just kind of adding on that um piece from from chiawana to another wanna, thing the quarterback's name is julian martinez i didn't want to just call him chiawana quarterback okay. it's julian martinez okay. and i think he started the last four or five games and, and is and right. comes back with some experience so yeah don't forget about cooper mcpherson on the defensive side too i mean he was the defensive player of the year as as a junior last year in the mcc and he's already been offered by uh, Eastern Washington University. But one of the things I want to, you know, that you're right, Todd, they've got to find some offense. They've, they've got to be able to do that. And if they do that, if they can get a couple touchdowns a game, I think the defense will take care of, it, of everything else. One of the things I remember last year was talking to Randy Affolter after a game with, with Chihuahua. And he says, we didn't know they were, they were sending guys left and right and just putting so much pressure on us. We didn't know where the next guy was coming. It was Don Hogue did a great job. Of, okay, this time let's send the out, right outside linebacker or the safeties coming. It was you, nobody knew who to block at times. It was chaos. So that that's the kind of stuff that that Chio One has got this year too. Cooper McPherson, best player in the MCC. Does anybody want to go down that road? I think he is. I I, I I've talked to more coaches. Yeah. Hey, he might be as good a defensive player that's come out of the city the, that's come out of that league in a very long time. He just kind of does it all for them. He's tall, rangy. He can blitz. He can cover. Uh, you can play him at end. You can play him back at safety if you need to be. I mean, he's a three level, rangy athlete, and he's just so difficult to block. Uh, it's just yeah. what you know. I think he's the best player in the in in the league, and and I think it's time for for him to sort of get maybe more more recognition at the state level as well. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think it's, it's a, it could be a tie or a toss up between him and David Cuckoo. I really do. I, I think, but Cooper, you're right. Cooper is, he kind of came out of nowhere. I think he had a little, little playing time as a sophomore, but he really made his mark last year as a junior. So I, I think everybody's expecting more out of him this year. And he's going to play. So he played tight end last year and, and Scott Bond told yeah. me he's going to be a full-time player kind of in the, in the slot. Um, to 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 give them another uh, uh you know another weapon in their pass game. So he's yeah. going to be a full time two way player and watch out. I think he's going to have a yeah. big year. Another I agree. have to give a shout out to special teams too. Um, Chihuahua always has good kickers. They always take somebody from the soccer team, and that's Morgan Dodson. Um, he'll be a junior. And he was, I don't even think he was second string. He just was a freshman when it happened where they always have good kickers. And that's how Chiawana beat Mike. And I think it was two years ago to open up the season. So um, have to give special teams a shout out. And then one thing too, when we're talking about Richland, kind of on the fringe where they're losing Josh Woodard, um, we talk about the good receivers, but he knew how to drop dimes. And of course him graduating um, is also having a new head coach that that could be a, a, a question mark is what it is as Josh Jelinek steps in. So um, that will be something to watch is how does Richland change as a team under new leadership? 
I do, to be honest with you, I don't think it's going to change much. And here's why Mike Neidhold as a coach there for years and years and years, did a great job of delegating. And so Josh knew a lot about what entails, you know, uh, as a head coach, he's been in every position in the school system, or he was the athletic director a few years back at Hanford high school for a few years. So, but he knows the offense. He, he was the offensive coordinator for them last year. Um, he, he really was concerned with the defensive unit. Um, when he after he got the job, he said we've got to do some, make some changes. I don't know if anybody remembered watching that Hermiston Richland game last year, but it was a it was a football game in track cleats. I mean, or a track meet in football shoes. It was uh, fifty six to forty nine. It was whoever had the 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 ball last was going to win. By the way, Todd, you were the one that broke that on Isaac Corey, who was supposed to be the the quarterback senior quarterback at Hermiston, and he's at Eastside Catholic now. So I don't even know what they have is as the leader as a quarterback at Hermiston right now. Yeah. Well, you, I want to, I want to talk to, okay, I, I got to talk to, to, to Josh a little bit about, you know, a couple things, the quarterback situation, but Hey, I, a great nickname for, for Preston, uh, for, for, for Preston Bryant. Does anybody know what his nickname is? Is he the beast? Something like that. Moose. He's the moose. Cause he's the this big, hockey, strong guy. So yeah. So what I like about their receiving core is they have three very different type receivers. You know, Colson's the big play guy, the the the, the galloping Gertie down the you know down the sideline and makes big plays. And then obviously, you know, uh, Boshik and and Bryant are going to be kind of the moving pieces. They can move inside, they can move outside. Um, different different skill sets. Bryant's kind of the guy that hey, if you're going to body me, that's a that's a win for me. It's, so whoever plays quarterback, and I would assume that Dylan Dunnan's probably going to start the season as as taking the first snap he's he was the the backup to josh a year ago but i mean you you, t you talk about the three guys that are in the competition david lee who's big strong arm and then obviously J you know uh J jackson woodard who's probably maybe the the high upside play as a sophomore uh you know that could that could be a revolving door all year but whoever it is is going to have plenty of guys and we talked about three but there are other guys you know levi stiber hayden galloway you know zach rose i mean they are so deep at receiver they should not have any difficulty putting up points now you guys mentioned the defense it can't really be any worse than it was last year but they did bring back and, I, and i'm sure you guys probably know this in the tri-city dj dj search was a defensive coordinator for richland's mm -hmm. state championship team in 2017 well he's back and I know one thing that Josh wanted to do was kind of simplify things uh, on defense, including their, their play calling. They've devoted more staffing to the defensive side of the ball. So, I mean, they know they can't win giving up 50 points a game like they did last year. And so that has been a, a, a huge emphasis this year. And, you know, if, if again, we're talking about seven on seven and scrimmaging. If, if those two things are any indicators on what their defense could be, they're back to being that opportunistic type defense like it was in 2017 that would – you know, like to take the ball away and, and give the offense the ball back. And if, if they can get two or three, four of those plays and, and, and two or three stops, who knows? I mean, I don't, I don't, I don't want to be the, the sports writer or the, or the team to, to, to sleep on Richland because they certainly have a plethora of, of skill position guys that the other three teams would, would love to have. And One more guy I want on that receiving core is that I think he's going to be a tight end for them. Silent Kiesel. Oh, honey, I've had a couple of the assistant coaches tell me that he is just muscled up. He's a big kid. He played on the basketball team. Not very much last year. Uh, he came off the bench, but um, they're, they're really high on that kid too. Yeah. I saw, I saw his contributing play in the state championship game. It was a hard flagrant foul at the end of the game. So yeah, I know he's got physicality too. Yes. Yes. You can always <laughs> tell who plays football uh, on the basketball court. And before moving out of the MCC, when we're talking, and I know it's still so early, but we're talking about player of the year predictions. You know, we talked about Cooper McPherson, Cuckoo, is that I think Alex Roberts also deserves to be in that conversation with what he does for Kennewick. So those, I guess, are our three predictions going into another year of the MCC. And taking a look around the Tri-Cities that we see the crossovers um, let's start with the uh, big nine last year. It was Moses Lake and Eastmont. And then at the end, it seemed like Moses Lake kind of fizzled out. Um, I guess predictions, thoughts on the uh, big nine 
and a lot of going on for Moses Lake, both on and off the field. That's the story I want to follow is Moses Lake. I think I think what they've had to go through this offseason trying to save athletics, it's it's such a well, it's it's an annoying story because somebody in the front office losing that kind of or miscalculating the money. But at the same time, what the community's done to 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 try to get uh, everybody back out on the fields and and in the stands as far as band and everything like that. So and I and Brett Jay, everybody around the Tri Cities knows who Brett Jay is. I mean, he he was a coach, he coached at Riverview and then he was at Hanford. And so everybody in the Tri Cities pretty much follows him anyway. And his son Brady at quarterback. Um, it's and he's only a junior this year, but I think to me that that could be the team to beat. What do you think, Todd? Oh, I think they're clearly the team to beat. Uh, you know, and that's not a knock on Eastmont. Eastmont lost a, a lot of seniors um, on both yeah. sides of the ball. They lost um, their, their really good coach, uh, Michael Don, who's now in the Othello School District as a, an administrator. But like you said, you know, Moses Lake, even though they lost a lot in that receiving tour, they have a, they have a fair amount of guys coming back. Um, I know a guy that, that they're really high on is Carter Anderson. Um, as a as a wide receiver um i'm sorry not not carter anderson grant smith uh he uh i got to saw see him at the tumwater or the thurston county camp at tumwater high school and um he's going to be a handful for people i mean this this next generation of receivers uh, carter anderson's another receiver in there um i brett you know uh brady jay is going to have plenty of guys to throw to but i i, I th they're big too and they've got I think you're just going to see a, a more seasoned defense and a bigger offensive line. And that's kind of always, that's always kind of the question about Moses Lake here, especially when you're facing an air raid team is, can they be physical? Uh, can they hold up at the, at the you know point of attack and can they stop anybody? Um, I think, I think both of those questions, um, I think Moses Lake will take a bigger step in the right direction this year. I think they're the most complete team in the, in the CBBN. And I think they're, I think they're going to, I, you know, they're going to be a borderline top 10 team for me. And uh, I just think with Eastmont taking a step back and the, and the rest of that league trying to find itself, I think this is clearly the team to beat guys and gals. Yep. I was at yeah. both the games last year, Moses Lake, yeah. when they beat Kamiakin in that weird game that got delayed by with the lightning strikes. And the final score was at 15, 14, 15, 13, Moses Lake beating Kamiakin at Lamson stadium. Uh, that was a really weird game. And then also was at the game where Chiawana pounded Moses Lake um, to make it into the, uh, the, the the first round of playoffs and the physicality. So you, you hit it right on the nose that that is the question mark with Moses Lake, that they have a great offense, Brady J. And then, of course, Brett J. does a great job of running the team. But that physicality piece that... Brady was just a sophomore last year, so I think with that group that have been playing together for so long that they kind of got a taste of what it would take with the physicality of Eastmont and then the physicality of Chiawana that knocked them out of playoffs. So I absolutely agree that Moses Lake is the team to watch. And then how does all the off-field stuff, of course, that they didn't even know if they're going to have athletics, that somehow the boosters raised half a million dollars, coaches are signed to dollar contracts just so that, the, that there is a season. So they could step up because it means that much more to them that they're another year older, more physical, and know that they have something to play for, knowing that um, – what people were saying in COVID, I appreciate sports that much because I've had to taste what it might be like to not have them. Yeah, I do. I... That's what we had to deal with. And sorry, Jeff, but I, you know, I having followed that story and and mm -hmm. especially the progress here over the last couple of weeks. Um, you know, they're 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 opening uh, in in Boise, Idaho this year. They're playing you know Eastern Idaho powerhouse rugby. And, you know, I asked Brett, I said, you know, with all that's going on in your community, you know, that's a pretty substantial trip to make. And he explains about how, you know, there's a lot of parties outside Moses Lake. Granted, that community has really rallied behind that nonprofit group to raise a half a million dollars. But there's there are a lot of teams in the CBBN 
and and rigby and the idaho association the, the tournament they're playing in uh, also made a lot of accommodations to make sure this this is a this, this is a successful season for moses lake football i know you talk to these coaches yeah they're going to coach for a dollar but I'm, i know that they're appreciative just to have their sport you know being able to play a season and and this is not just a one-year thing it's it's going to be at least a two-year thing uh with the one dollar contracts but I, I, you, you mentioned this, Jamie, this is something that could really galvanize not only football, but all the all the really good sports that we know about at Moses Lake wrestling, girls, basketball, baseball, track and field. It's um, it's going to be very interesting to see how these athletes react to kind of a second kind of a second win, knowing that they, they're going to have a season. It's it's been a remarkable rallying story by that community uh, on a, a after a very a colossal screw up by the district uh last spring now moving on to the greater spokane league the team to watch um if we're looking at the 4a gonzaga prep they knocked out chiawana in the first round of playoffs before losing to uh graham kapowson in the in the playoffs are they the team to watch again no question. i think so yeah i mean they returned practically their entire defense and it's it's interesting because Nate Graham's their new their their new coach. Uh, he was the quarterbacks coach for uh, the team last year. He was kind of the sort of unspoken heir apparent. Uh, he takes over, but they got Bob Cassano back, who's the who's really the guy that that runs that triple option. That's so difficult to prepare for in a week. You've seen it a lot, Jeff. They played it enough yeah. times in Tri Cities. So you know he he applied for other jobs, didn't get it, and came back to Gonzaga Prep, and and that's a great get for Nate Graham to 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 know that part of the, you know that part is 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 in good hands. Um, but with that defense back, and they have so much speed and athleticism on the perimeter, it might be the best mo. It might be the best collection of athlete perimeter athletes they've had. You're going to see a lot of outside runs, and if if somebody lets them get to the corner, they're going to score a lot of long touchdowns. Um, it's a, it's a up and coming group. It was a team that, that gave Graham Kapowson all he, all he could handle last year in the, you know, in the, in the state playoffs. Uh, I, I think they're clearly the team to beat. I know they have a new coach, but it's Gonzaga prep football in, in the triple option. I mean, it's, it might be the most difficult thing to prepare for in, in one week in class four, a football. Well, that wraps up our mcc big nine gsl coverage we're going to take a quick break jamie council jeff morrow todd millis talking high school football and we're going to hear from our sponsors that make this show possible you're listening to jamie council on the sports council Inconveniences can happen at, well, inconvenient times. JRT Mechanical has plumbers and HVAC technicians available 24-7 if an emergency does arise. Or if you feel like your house isn't cooling like it used to. Or if you're tired of a hose leaking from last winter's freeze. JRT is an honest, reliable company that's been in the Pacific Northwest for more than three decades. Give JRT Mechanical a call at 509-314-4314 or visit JRTMechanical.com. If you've got a winery, brewery, or dairy, why buy industrial parts and supplies from across the country? Central Industrial Sales is your local source for supplies and equipment for the dairy, food processing, winery, and brewing industries. We specialize in custom fabrication, industrial cleaning equipment, sanitary fittings, valves, pumps, chemicals, and many other supplies. Everything's available through our website, by phone, or by dropping by our office. Call 509-375-4032 or find us at centralindustrialsales.com. School is starting back up, and it's time to get your Krispy Kreme fundraiser scheduled. It's a fun and easy way to support your team and school. And Krispy Kreme wants to thank our firefighters and law enforcement. Wednesdays, first responders who purchase a dozen donuts will receive a second dozen original glazed for just $4.99. And don't forget, everyone can have two dozen original donuts for $24.99 every day. All at your local Krispy Kreme, 2805 Dewport Tail Street in Richland. Come in with a sweet tooth, leave with a smile. You're listening to the Sports Council on 1340 ESPN, the Tri-Cities leader in sports. Welcome back to the Sports Council. I'm Jamie Council, joined by Todd Millis, Jeff Morrow, talking high school football. And we know it's not just about the 3A, it's not about the 4A, but it's also about 
the smaller schools and let's start with the SCAC, the 1A. And of course, uh, you can't talk about 1A football without talking about Royal. They won their 10th state title last year. Wiley Allred over there. Um, I mean, they're they're kind of the the talk of the town every year, it seems, for 1A. Oh, my God. Um, you know, I know they got Lance Allred back. I mean, he's going to be a state player of the year uh, candidate. Um, and he's going to play both ways again at quarterback and, and linebacker, I believe. But, I mean, the thing with Wiley Allred's football teams is this. Um, even if, if he's got, uh, you know, he loses a bunch of seniors, I mean, they, he's got all these kids that got to play a lot last, you know, that previous season. I mean, because they, they're running roughshod over their opponents, most of their opponents, where they, they, they start the running clock at the beginning of the third quarter. Now, maybe it's not enough time to play very much but they they get these kids out there and 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 then you throw in the fact that they they always seem to end up in the state title game that's what is that four maybe five more playoff games because you got the crossover that you know in the postseason so that's that's over half another season so he he's never worried about what he's going to get back because he knows that these kids all know the system and you know I, i don't know what it is about royal city but I've never seen a community that supports. It doesn't matter if it's football; it's any sport. And and the, I think they're the only one A school I know that has their own golf course in the in the town. Um, you know, as the farmers put it together, it's just it's amazing what they do up there. I'm really excited though that Cashmere has joined the fray this year. That's that's quite a a deal to have, and it's a nine team league. I think, although I was looking at the schedule, Zilla doesn't look like it's playing in that league this year i don't think there's a west anymore is there no yeah it's one it's it's one league there there are no non-conference games i'm i'm yeah or if there is just one yeah yeah because last year there was 10 teams total east and west and of course um yeah top and ish on the other side so it was always a top and ish royal but it's it's different this year yeah and wapato was up at the two way too so I, I, I don't know what more you can say about Wiley Allred. He's long, he, I mean, this is an astounding. He's he's won 91% of his games, guys. A, yeah. 91% of his games as a as a as the Royal coach. I you know, one of the best things I finally got to do was drive over and, and watch a playoff game at Royal. And you hear about teams, you know, you talk to coaches, contending coaches that hey, we're going to go play Royal, we're not going to be scared. We're we're just going to play loose and see what happens. la di da di da And I, I know that's well-intended. And then you get up there, and like you said, it's a, the, the school is up on the hill in Royal City. And then these guys come out in their black uniforms and their black helmets <laughs> and, and with the gold trim. And Wiley walks on the field. And you just look at the reaction of the visiting team, and you just go, it's over. <laughs> yep. Yep. And you can just tell. Like, we can't beat these guys. And, and quite frankly, really, you, you probably can't. Uh, but it's it's tradition. It's great coaching. We talk about some of the great defensive coordinators um, in in the state of Washington. And if you if you don't have Jeremy Scroggins at the top of your list on on how he can coordinate a defense, I know you you know he was at Grandview for a while, and, and he's been with Riley for a number of years now. What they did in the state playoffs last year giving up one touchdown in the entire WI playoffs. And that was in the championship game against Lakeside and nine mile falls. I, it's just, it's about discipline. It's about physicality and it's about tradition. And none of those three things ever wane. It just, it's just, it's incredible to watch. And it, you're right, Jeff. It's just, you know, five or six seniors graduate, seven seniors graduate. They got this whole new crew that comes in and they don't, they don't miss a beat. And no. oh, by the way, we've got the state player of the year back. And maybe the best linebacking core in one A football, um, and and some pretty good receivers. You know, Jackson Larson and you know uh, Shea Stevenson are back. I mean, are they the most athletic team I've ever seen in one A? No, but they are the most disciplined, sound football team. Maybe in, not only in one A, but you could throw them in there with three A Bellevue under with Butch Goncharoff. They they are about as disciplined a football team as you're ever going to find that's ever played in the state of Washington. I know I, I I said something earlier about not you know a lot of contenders around the state lost. There was it was a very heavy senior quarterback con, uh, troop last year. 
this is a one league that does return a fair amount of quarterbacks. And I think the team that you, you probably like to look out for is Connell. Um, they have, you know, Carson Lloyd, and you could probably talk to this a little bit, Jeff, you know, Scott Forsyth is, uh, I think it's probably a second year. Does that sound right? Going into yep. the second year as the head coach, replacing Wayne Reiner. Um, mm -hmm. This is a, this is a, this is a team that I think is going to take a big step up. I cashmere with a hundred, you know, 70 to 90 kids out and a majority of their team back. And they're going to be a top five team around the state. I think you would have to say is probably the, the biggest contender to Royal in this league. But I think Connell is a, is a team that, that could really throw a monkey wrench in all this with Carson Loy at quarterback. You have Jackson price, you know, you have, uh, M M Mathiah Cope and then Max Anderson. I mean, you have three legitimate receivers that have been productive, but I mean, Carson Lloyd's the guy. I mean, he's, he, he's a trigger man. He he's, he's been, he's, he's faced all these teams before. I, I think I expect this team it, it solidly. Number three would not surprise me if Connell jumped up and beat one of the top two teams. I think this is a state playoff team for sure. Um, I think this is going to be a better league folks um than it maybe has been the last couple of years a lot of it has to do with the the um you know the addition of cashmere but you know connell and then zilla obviously that group's you know juniors and seniors as well so those four teams um i think uh you know are, are certainly playoff teams uh moving forward yep i, I agree i agree it, connell always comes up with a pretty tough team what i've liked about them in the last few years is they don't take any non-league game, games off and what i mean by that is they go out and find the best uh, teams to play to make them. They might take their lumps early, but by the time the, the the regular season ends, they're going to be in the playoffs somehow. And they're that when I say that, you know, they're always going to play Royal, obviously because they're in league. But they like to go over to Othello. Those are that's a neighborhood brawl, and Othello's a pretty good program. Then they'll go over to to North Idaho and play a couple of strong teams up there. So the, the, they don't shy away from anybody, and and that's just the attitude of, of first at Wayne Reiner and now, now Scott Forsyth. So. Now moving on to a to be um, taking a look at the UAC. That was a really interesting uh, story last year where taking a look at Burbank, that's always kind of run the table. Then they had players drop out to focus on basketball when we're talking about um, Burbank, but then it was Riverview who ended up, winning and going undefeated in the EWAC last year they were RPI I think was seven at the end of the season and then it was Tri-Cities prep behind them Burbank three so what are your thoughts right now around um, the EWAC as we move to Tubi? Todd go ahead and talk about Burbank. Yeah I well I, I tell you this division is 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 very intriguing it reminds me a lot of what's going on in the MCC you have you have Riverview and Tri-City prep that I think are the you know, they both of them are going to have really good fronts on both sides of the ball. Um, I think they're going to they're going to be physical. And then I think you have, you know, with the, you know, I, Quincy Scott and, and Tristan uh, Frymo coming back playing receiver for this team. I, you know, you, you're, you're bringing back basketball on grass and that's what it was. They, you know, they didn't they decided not to play as juniors to focus on trying to win a state championship. And, and you know, they came up obviously the one step short. But to have them back, and then obviously Crew Pereira, you know, as that third receiver, I, it, it reminds me a lot of Richland. You know, it's 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 kind of the Richland situation that they're going to score points. You know, I, they have a quarterback that they're really really high on. So um, it's uh, oh Justin Good. Um, I, I know he doesn't have the experience, but they 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 like him. Um, I think this is an offense that's going to be very very productive. And at the two B level, you know, if you have three guys that you know, you're not going to find a whole lot of you know, you're not going to find three guys usually in 2B football um, on the other side when you spread teams out that are going to be able to defend three three guys of this quality in the past game. So it, it's interesting to see the, the two teams that are big and and are going to kind of steamroll people. And, and I, you know, Riverview still has a lot of guys back. That junior class is really good. They, you know, they have Hyatt Clark back at quarterback. They're really high on Wyatt Curtis at the Z, at the Z, at the, at the outside receiver spot situation now they did lose Carson Rawlings to a, a career ending um uh, neck injury it was a genetic thing um I know you saw him last year Jeff he's he's a real he's a bull um so they're gonna have to figure out a little bit of the run game but the, you know they have a, enough guys back to to win this division again 
Um, and then Tri City Prep has has the front and some guys back too. So it's I th- I think it's a lot like the MCC Jeff, um, yeah. with sort of the contrast and the quality as well. It's it's any one of these three these three teams. If some if at the end of the year they win it, I wouldn't be surprised by it. Yeah, any three uh, any games involving these teams against each other are are must see football for the for the uh, EWAC. I I think uh, you know the losing Carson Rollins is going to be a huge blow because not only was he a uh, their running back, but he was one of their better defensive players at linebacker. And, you know, talking to his parents uh, um, or his, fa- his father telling me that he's, he's, he can, he still can play baseball. It's, a, it's just contact sports that he can't play. So I think he'll be out there. He's a good ball baseball player. So I'm glad to hear that. Um, but you mentioned something about Trace Teagle too that he's yeah, yeah he's transferring it sounds like he's transferring out to, to pursue a, um, more of the baseball um situation i think kennewick uh, don't okay. quote me on that, but i think he might be a kennewick trace the, the the talented wide receiver first teamer yes it's yes a bit dense yeah. on their in their past game but like i said they're really high on wyatt curtis who's part of that yeah. really talented junior class so uh i don't i don't i think chris welch uh is glad to have him i i think that he he doesn't think they're going to miss too much of a beat you know um yeah especially at a uh, wide receiver. Chris Welch is a really enthusiastic and talented coach too. I, I, I've never seen anybody on the sidelines of one of their games and he's wearing his letterman's jacket from when he played at Riverview. And, and I, he just said, he's so proud and, and just loves, loves the Riverview community, the Finley community. He's just, so, I, I mean, you couldn't find a better coach in that situation for, for the Panthers. And I think that's something that speaks about that community in general that you're seeing from River mm-hmm. Sports is you have to you have to want to contribute. You have to have that school pride. And Welch is a really good driver of that, that you've seen it in baseball, that Riverview for the first time, I think it was ever beat Tri-Cities Prep in baseball. And even though Tri-Cities Prep has won state the past couple of years, Riverview has beaten them during the regular season. And so you're seeing that in football, you're seeing it in baseball, that they're really taking pride in the sports of their community. And it's just fun to see as you see the ebbs and flows of communities and the sports that go with it. I agree. I agree. Now let's move on to 1B. Um, in 1B, Liberty Christian, they got knocked out in the quarterfinals last year and always seem to have a good team. But of course, it's been Liberty Bell that has been a top. So what can we expect from Liberty Christian this year? I think you're going to – I was looking at their roster the other day, and they lost very, very few kids to graduation. Um, they, they they've got like 14 to 16 guys, Jeff. 14 to 16 I, yeah. You know, and the guy I'm thinking about, you know, Craig, Craig Lukens, the head coach, is how do I get that ball in Charlie Branning's hands again? I mean, I look at the stats from uh, last, you know, last night on what he did last year. You know, 2,066 yards rushing in 10 games. He caught 17 passes for 395 yards, scored 39 touchdowns. And he also plays defense. Uh, but in that unit, the defensive unit's all back. Now, what I'm kind of excited about is on September 14th, uh, Nia Bay is make, is making the visit back over to the Tri Cities to play uh, Liberty Christian. So, and Nia Bay, they, they had a lot of underclassmen last year, and they were loaded, and they had some really good athletes. So, but I, I think Liberty Christian is going to be the team to beat down here in in the Southeast One B, um, the eight man league, and and uh, you know DeSales, I think will give them a run uh, as they always seem to do. But I mean. If, if you're not at a big Tri-City, you know, a 4A, 3A game, uh, you can't go wrong with going to an eight-man game that Liberty Christian's involved in. Yeah, I think they're a top three team in the state, Jeff and Jamie. Yeah. Uh, you know, I, they've been knocking on the door here for a few years. They seem to run into Nia Bay a lot. Nia Bay, like you said, that physical run game. Now with uh, Liberty Bell up in the 2B ranks, they're, I think they're the team to beat. Uh, they didn't lose a lot, and they have the the best offensive backfield in, in eight-man football. Uh, Wilbur Crest and Keller are still going to be a, a handful, uh, and that league over there is probably a little deeper than than the league uh, with the sales. And, and, oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, but I, I, think, I, think, I think Liberty Christian, with all the guys they have back, if they can get the quarterback piece, it's funny because he's kind of had to morph this offense. You know, two years ago – they were throwing it all over the lot. And that's what, that's right. what you can do when you have a three-year starter 
um, who's going to go play college football. And um, that piece has, has been kind of hit or miss the last couple of years. If they can get that. And obviously, you know, Joey Isley, if he's, if he's that guy, um, great, you know, um, it, it could be, it, but it could be, you know, they, they could even platoon. I mean, they have a, a number of guys. That's, that's what happens when you have some depth in, in eight man football. And that, and that, that's a luxury they've had um, as long as Craig's been there. I mean, when you're a borderline one B two B football and you keep flipping, you, you, you get guys. So I, they're the depth and the coaching and all that experience coming back and Charlie Branding, Jeff, you mentioned him. He's a, he's an all state running back. He's an all state athlete. Um, and he had 2,500 yards of total offense last year, and he could even do better than that this year, depending on how far they go. It's, it's a loaded team that if, you know, it, it, they, they seem to have, they seem to have a kryptonite here in Nia Bay and we'll find out, like you said, early in the season, but if they can find a way to get by that team, this is a team that I think can win it all. We're going to take another break. You're listening to high school football predictions. It's preseason here in the state of Washington. It's the Sports Council on 1340 ESPN, your Tri-Cities leader in sports. Inconveniences can happen at, well, inconvenient times. JRT Mechanical has plumbers and HVAC technicians available 24-7 if an emergency does arise. Or if you feel like your house isn't cooling like it used to. Or if you're tired of a hose leaking from last winter's freeze. JRT is an honest, reliable company that's been in the Pacific Northwest for more than three decades. Give JRT Mechanical a call at 509-314-4314 or visit JRTMechanical.com. If you've got a winery, brewery, or dairy, why buy industrial parts and supplies from across the country? Central Industrial Sales is your local source for supplies and equipment for the dairy, food processing, winery, and brewing industries. We specialize in custom fabrication, industrial cleaning equipment, sanitary fittings, valves, pumps, chemicals, and many other supplies. Everything's available through our website, by phone, or by dropping by our office. Call 509-375-4032 or find us at centralindustrialsales.com. Kick off football season with Krispy Kreme and the Dr. Pepper collection, including three Dr. Pepper football-themed donuts, August 23rd through September 2nd. We've also brought back the fan favorite, pumpkin spice cake, now through November 28th. So come in today and ask how Krispy Kreme can help your club or team raise money for the upcoming school year. It's fun and easy at Krispy Kreme, 2805 Dewport Tail Street in Richland. Come in with a sweet tooth, leave with a smile. We're back on the Sports Council, Jamie Council, Jeff Morrow, and Todd Millis talking high school football, and it's preseason, and Todd, you do a lot, not just on the West Side, but you really take a look at football statewide, and you've kind of taken a look at all the different programs, gone through every single classification with your predictions, not just in the MCC, but statewide, so can you go through what your predictions are here in the preseason for the state of Washington and football. Well, yeah, we can start right at 4A. We, you know, where you have a two-time defending state champion, Lake Stevens, Colton Matson was the Gatorade player of the year. He was our offensive player of the year. He's back. He's the best quarterback in the state bar none. Um, he has, he has Jay Sean Lamar, whose brother Jaden Lamar is at the university of Oregon. So they, they have, they have the two offensive centerpieces that every contending team needs to have. Now they have to replace a lot on defense. They lost 10 starters, but it's a, it's a, it's a program. It's a system. And Tom try is the best coach in the state in knowing how to get um, his ball carriers or his receivers in space to make plays. Um, I think the team that's probably best suited to, to challenge them, Jamie is, is Camus. They might have the most complete roster in class four a again, a lot of people don't know him because they're down there in Vancouver area. They have a, a new coach, but a, a familiar name in Adam Matheson, who's, one of the best coaching minds we'll see in, in, in the state of Washington and a loaded roster, uh, a returning state quarterback, a bunch of receivers, a bunch of running backs, a big line, and then probably maybe the most ferocious pass rusher in the state. So uh, I, I suspect that those two teams will go at it and be the, the kind of the co-favorites in, in class four. A. Um, you mentioned Randy and, and, and Kennewick and being close to breakthrough in three. I have them as a top three team in three, a, even though I didn't pick them to win, 
the MCC, I think at the state level, especially with all the good teams that have moved up to 4A, I, I think Kennewick is, is closer than it's ever been to, to, to being there back in the championship game and winning it all. Um, Bellevue is, is going to be a tough hurdle for anybody with the wing tee and, and the best offensive line in the state. And Willie Washer, um, Dimitri Manning, those two guys on the offensive line are, are D1 uh, commits. Um, and they're just so loaded and all the tradition. So it's going to take it's going to take a big effort. But Kennewick knows how to play the wing tee, but probably as well as anybody, um, along with O'Day and Eastside Catholic. Those, those, those four teams I have kind of leading the parade in, in the 3A ranks. Um, and then Roosevelt, obviously, is kind of a wild card because they have so many um, transfers that are still trying to get cleared. But if, if they can get a bunch of the, the 20 to 30 transfers they have, um, it's going to be interesting to see what, what they can do. They were in the postseason last year um, and, and have a lot of talent. Um, 2A, look up north. You got Anna Cordes, probably the best story in the state last year. You know, a few years ago, they weren't even playing varsity football, Jamie. Um, they didn't have the numbers. They didn't, you know, it just, they were, a lot of things were, were, were going wrong and they had to work their way back playing kind of an independent schedule. And, um, then they got really good and they have a really good coach in Justin Ports. A lot of those guys, including the Beaner brothers are back to defend that title, but look for Lyndon to be, to right there with them with Brent Hapner. Um, they, they, uh, they're physical. They know each other. Um, they, they had a real barn burner of a game last year. Uh, I, I've just, I've watched Brent Hapner play um, this year at quarterback and he's got a, a, a different level of determination um, I think those are the two teams to beat in 2A. And then we talked about Royal in 1A, clearly the team to beat. Um, some teams in Vancouver, maybe Seton Catholic, who played them in the state semifinals last year. Um, I, th I think with all their guys back could be maybe that best, that that th maybe their top contender. And then Okanagan, who, my gosh, I mean, with they talk about physicality and style. Uh, you know, they scrimmaged against Royal this year. And talking to Wiley, he's, you know, I go, what if they were in 1A? And uh, Wiley was like, yeah, I mean, they would they would be right there in 1A as well. They're the overwhelming favorite in 2B with what they have back, uh, led by Carter Kukenbuk, who's going to Boise State as a tight end. He obviously plays quarterback for Okanagan. Napa Vine in that, in that District 4 is always going to be good. And then Freeman dropping down from 1A. So there's going to be some some depth at 2B. And we talked about the EWAC 2B teams as well as Goldendale on the other side. And then, obviously, in the B ranks, uh, Nia Bay. We gotta, we gotta really watch out for uh, for those guys. Um, they 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 they've won it before. They've been in the championship game two years ago. And with Liberty Bell being up in two B, um, with that tradition and physicality, um, I think they're the team to beat in 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 one B or eight man football, however you want to call it. God, every time I hear you talk, just the knowledge you have from around the state, it's. Um awesome where a lot of people talk about the decline in coverage of high school athletics so tell me how can people find you and the work that you do for SB Live and the coverage well I just hey I gotta thank my two partners here that who've done some really good work for scorebook live who uh um an old sports writer newspaper sports writer and Jeff who I've known a long time and obviously Jamie who started writing last spring and has written some really good stuff I appreciate it uh you know I love covering the state of Washington we're under the sports illustrated umbrella. Um, just, you know, I, we've changed our domain so many times that I've now forgotten, but just, just look under SB live Washington on Google and it'll come up and we've got a lot of really cool, quick, quick hit preview content. And then we'll, we'll get a little more in depth as, as, as the season closes here, uh, at, you know, after Labor Day weekend, one of those rare times where we start games after Labor Day weekend, but with camp opening, obviously on August 21st. Well, Todd, Jeff, thank you so much for your time and your look into the world that is high school football. Thank you. Thanks for having us. Well, that'll wrap up this week's show of the Sports Council. Football season is here. Well, that'll wrap up this week's show of the Sports Council. A reminder that the Sports Council happens four times a month, Thursdays at 1130 a.m. on 1340 ESPN Radio, your Tri-Cities leader in sports, on demand at 1340 ESPNRadio.com. It's also available via podcast. Wherever you get your podcast, just search for the Sports Council. As well as there is a video portion that you can find on SK Plus. SK Plus is an app that you can find in the Apple Store. 
available for iPhones, iPads, or Apple TV. You can also find it on SkeeterBuggins.com. Thank you to Stevens Media Group and Skeeter Buggins Productions with the help of the Sports Council. We'll catch you next time. Until then, I'm Jamie Council.